What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to talk about some of these things you can learn from these Lil Durk style music videos. The two videos we're gonna be talking about here is created by Jerry Production. So shout out to him. He did a great job on these two videos. And as you guys know, my goal isn't to give away secrets that people are using. My goal is to talk about things that we talk about all the time on the channel, help you learn from those type of things. The key thing that you wanna take away here is editing in a smart fashion. You want to always be listening to the music while you're editing, making it flow. And some of these editing techniques that they throw in here uh, also help support that. In terms of how the video is shot, my best recommendation for this is to get a lot of different shots. You wanna get a lot of different scenes and you wanna get a lot of different scenes that have steady movement as well as this up close handheld movement. Whenever you have something that has such high energy like this, you need to have handheld shots. Your camera needs to be matching the energy of the song and what's going on. Imagine if he set his camera up on a tripod and there was one person standing here and they just had their hands in their pockets the entire time, it would look completely different. So those are some key takeaways that I want you guys to learn from and try and think about that when you do go on set uh, and you're creating something with high energy like these little Dirk songs and videos. So shout out to them. Let's hop into Adobe Premiere here and uh, talk about some of these little techniques that you guys can do. All right, guys, so in Adobe Premiere, again, the number one thing we're going for is being smart with the editing and editing to the music. So my biggest recommendation here, make sure it's not impossible to see your audio track. If your audio track's looking like this, it's gonna be really hard to edit to the beat. You wanna grab this in Premiere and just give yourself some more space so you can see all these different audio waves in the track. And then anytime there's a hit, you can see where the audio jumps up. You can click C, make some little cuts here, or you can position it here, click this button to make a little marker so you have a rough idea of how to structure the video. Where you wanna make your cuts, where you wanna make parts in the video that jump out and match with the music. All right, so now let's bring in our footage here. And again, a lot of these videos, some of them are in slow motion. So let's go ahead and create that first transition that we were talking about earlier that you can see right here. Again, super great for the energy of the movement, utilizing speed, but also by utilizing this blur to kind of pop in and out of different parts of the scene like that. So I'll find a spot where I wanna create the transition and click Control K just to make a cut. So right about here is good whenever he puts his hand down. It's another thing you wanna pay attention to. You wanna keep a good eye on whatever's happening in the scene so you can kinda of create these seamless transitions. You see if I put my second clip there, just from his hand going across the screen, if I was to press play just with that rough cut, you already have a nice little seamless transition that's playing into the energy. You can keep it just like that if you want to, but if you wanna add a little bit more like they do in the video, what I can do is position this cut right where the beat hits, We'll go ahead and start our blur transition right here at this little jump in the song. So I'll click C, make my cut. And then on this clip, I'm gonna right click and I'm just gonna speed it up a bit more just so it differs from the normal movement. Again, let's line everything up right. We should have a little jump in speed right there. And then I'll add that blurring effect. For that, you can use the echo effect within Adobe Premiere or After Effects. I'm in my color workspace right now. So my effects are in the bottom left. If you are in the editing workspace, you might see your effects over on the right. But go ahead and search for echo and just drop it on there. And then once you select this clip in your effect controls, you can change around the look of everything. So if it's too bright, you can change the decay. You can change around your echo operator for some different looks. And you can change around your number of echoes for more of that ghosting effect. Go ahead and scale this second clip up more so it's more in your face whenever it pops in. And again, matching the tone of the movement matching what's going on in the scene with the hands up. It's a great way to create a little seamless transition with a bit of a flash and a bit of that echoing. And if this is happening a bit too fast, you can always click C, cut a little bit before. Again, just right click and copy and paste all the effect work you did onto there. Go into the transition, you can right click on the little cut you made here so that instead of going from this to lit up and all the echoes, you can apply default transition and just sort of have this gradually blend together. I think that's a bit more subtle for how the effect starts. And you can also click on that, change the alignment, maybe put it at center cut, change the timing of it. So there you guys go. Again, easy stuff, easy little techniques. A lot of the time it's really just a pacing issue. And now another thing you can do, a much less subtle thing that's gonna take a lot less time. Let's go ahead and bring in another clip again, right where that beat is, where it's bumping up again. Again, we want to click on the clip and our effect controls scale it. This time we have a we can bring it back a bit more just to kind of emphasize that kick. And again, this clip is in slow motion, so let's give it a bit more speed. 
And then right when he kicks out the screen, we'll go ahead and click Control K. Again, these are things that you want to promote in the video. Any type of movement like this is something that you could play in with the speed. So the more animated the person is, the better if you're going for that high energy. Now, much more subtle, what you can do is between these cuts, if you want a nice little flash, just click, use your arrow keys, go over one frame, just like that. You want to click Control K. And then on this first frame, right in between the transition cut, make sure you're using Control Alt, your mouse wheel to zoom into there. You can select that, go to your color workspace over in the right. You can just make that super bright and kind of make it like a little camera flash. Because it's only one frame, you get this super bright little flash transition. Super quick, super easy, and can again play in with that speed. Now speaking of that camera flash, let's talk about this scene right here where we have the outdoors. You can see there's a bit of shake going on here. Very high energy, very in your face, and they also have this flashing light going on as well. So they use the flashing light or the flickering a few times throughout. This is extremely easy to do. There are some Flickr plugins out there. Like for example, if you have the um, Sapphire pack by Boris FX, you can just drop in the Sapphire Flickr like this. And then you can control the amplitude. This is really useful for high energy, but it's very optional. It's very easy to recreate that. I even have a Flickr preset, which is in my preset pack three. If you guys are interested, you can check that out down below. A bunch of my effects packs when mixed with these things that I'm talking about and the pacing and everything really help make things flow. To do this without any plugins, you wanna use your color again, just like how we created that flash. So in your color workspace, again, window workspaces, make sure you're in color. What we can do is just make one little adjustment. So we'll just click here. Anytime you click with this clip selected in your effect controls, you're gonna see how this Lumetri color now popped up. You can actually open up any of these values that you see here on the right but the only difference being you can actually add keyframes to them. So what we can do is we can go to the exposure here, starting at the beginning, we can just click the little stopwatch to set a keyframe. Then we could use our arrow keys, move a couple of frames, bump that up, move a couple of frames, bump that down. As simple as that. And you see if I play it through, now that we have this keyframe going on, you can see how the velocity is changing with everything. And if I go through here, you can see how we now have this flickering going on with the light. If you wanted to flicker faster, you guys can just make keyframes that are more tight together. So I'll move one frame, bump it up, move one frame, bump it down. And just keep repeating that one frame, bump it up, one frame, bump it down. And that way you can have this sort of flashing light going on. Let's add in that shake that we were talking about earlier. For any type of shake, what you guys could do is same with the flicker. You could keyframe with this clip selected, your position and your scale. So you bump it up a tiny bit, you move, you click motion, move it like this, something like this, or you're just going through, clicking your right arrow key and making little movements. This is a little annoying to do, so I like to use uh, free presets. You can see if I play through here, you get a little shake going on, looks pretty cool. But there are some cool free presets I'm gonna put you onto. So I'll right click and we'll remove this. I like to use, I think it's called Jarl's handheld presets. Jarl's Deadpool handheld camera presets. I'll leave a link to this below. Again, free download. They have some nice easy ones for oversized footage. Um, handheld camera with a long lens, small camcorder, somewhat steady, and just drag and drop. If for any reason this is changing the scaling, and you already made some scaling adjustments, we'll just control Z that. I wanna right click and nest first, and then you can drag and drop. There you go. This one's a bit more subtle. And you can see if I have the clip selected and click on motion, if you pay attention to the edges, see how it's subtly moving back and forth. So again, depends on the clip. Do this with scale as well. So for example, whenever someone kicks, what I like to do is click control K, and just do a little bump in scale. So we'll click to set that keyframe. And then we'll move over one and bump out, bump in, whatever you want to do. Again, everything's happening so fast. You can get a little, you can get a little creative with it and have little fast flashing things like that. Now let's go ahead and combine uh, what we've talked about so far. So at this point, 158, you can kind of see right there, but you also have some flashing going on like that. So to do something easy like that, we've already got the custom shake going on here between this cut. What I'm gonna do is click K once the shake ends, select them both and then nest them. 
That way we can lock in all the position things. It's a great way just to reset. So whenever you double click in your nested sequence, see all the craziness with the keyframes and the changed values. But then when we go back to our nested sequence, you see it's just a fresh slate. So that's how you can stack on different effects or different um, movement or positioning. And then we'll go ahead and just add echo onto this. And there might be a bit of lag just because um, this is a little bit computer intensive. So keep that in mind. Add like a ton of echoes. So you can see how you get a bit more of that echo now that we have the shake involved. Another thing you can do if you want to tone down the echo at all or again stack different effects onto it. Go ahead and just delete that for now. I'm going to hold down alt on my keyboard and just click and drag this up. And then you can drag the echo onto that duplicated clip. Again, let's go ahead and make it a bit easier to see. And you can stack anything else. So you can add a blur. Let's add a directional blur. Bump up the length. You can change the blending mode of this specific clip. So we'll select the top one uh, up here in opacity or blending mode. You can put it on something like screen, linear dodge add. So again, you have full control over how you want the transition to be. Change the blur length a little bit. And now you have something completely different going on. Maybe not make it. So you can have this sort of ghosting going on along the hand. Again, if you want to bring that out more, use your color, darken it up. There you go, created something completely new. We still have that echo in there. We still have that flash in there, but just by duplicating your clip, changing your blending mode, knowing how to nest, knowing how to stack different things on, you can really create anything you want. You can keyframe any of these values. Um, and that's why I think the power of experimenting and just knowing some of those basic steps can really help you along the way. I think that looks pretty cool too. With all the flash going on, the shake going on, definitely high energy. And if I wanted to, if I wanted to, because these are ungraded, just select them all, nest them once I'm done with my adjustments and um, go in here, color correct, add a LUT just to add more color. And we'll just copy and paste that color onto everything else. So again, just some little techniques to be able to take control of your video and to add in that fast paced stuff. I think that tip at the end there where we talk about nesting, duplicating, changing blending modes, you can do that with any combination of effects but just always keep in mind the things I said at the beginning first, where we talk about being smart with your editing, matching to the music, and then structuring the video so that it matches the audio. So last little effect editing thing I'm gonna talk about is this scene here. We're not going to dive too much into masking. We talked about a bunch of masking stuff you can do before, but if you want this cool sort of look uh, where you have your subject isolated and you can create this kind of blurred, this streak blur on other people in the scene, it's also useful if you need to hide or censor anything. Uh, let me show you how to do that. And it is extremely easy. All you wanna do is add in a directional blur like we did before um, with blending things together. So we'll drop in directional blur want to set your direction. So there's was going up and down. So we can set that at like 180. Take the blur length, bump that up. And it was kind of slight. And then what you can do is in your directional blur section here, you're going to see your little masking tools, you can just create a simple little mask over what you don't want to be blurred out. So like this, make sure you connect it, and you see it's only blurring out him specifically, you want to go ahead and click inverted, and then you see you have this rough edge. You want to go to your mask here and just bump up the feather. Very simple. Change around the blur length if it's a little bit too much. Cool little isolating effect. I hope this did help you. I hope this helps you create better videos in the future. And if you did enjoy, please slap a like. It means a huge amount to me. Greatly appreciate it. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to see. See, the name of my project was Yeet Poppin, but I ended up changing it. Uh, I want to make a 3D tutorial on some of the stuff from that music video if you are interested. I like to keep a good mix of stuff you can do in Premiere, After Effects, cool composition things, and then 3D, just to keep it interesting, fun, and uh, reach all levels of interest and difficulty. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you in the next one.